and I know you don't work on these so much, but I've been very much concerned lately looking at the, the kind of mechanisms that, that are involved with um, learning disabilities. And would you consider learning disabilities as I mean, the, the major ones being attentional disorders, to, um, uh, things like um, autisms, the whole scale of autisms, mm -hmm. um, and I would include Tourette's syndrome and mm -hmm. um, also stuttering, for instance, and mm -hmm. dyslexias. Would they fit your model in any way, or are they, are they totally, from my point of view, these are disorders of laterality. Right. I mean, I think that there's a range of neurodevelopmental disorders in children uh, that could fit my model in terms of the disease model, in that they may just represent abnormalities of the body and the brain at, certain fit, at that early age of life. Sometimes it's a stepping stage to something else. Like a lot of people have attentional impairment as kids, even OCD symptoms, sometimes Tourette's, and then later they develop bipolar disorder. And probably there's something neurodevelopmentally abnormal that over time changes in its presentation. But in other people, that's what they have. And uh, in some other people, they have that for a while and then the brain changes and it goes away. So I think it does fit the disease model, but maybe with those nuances. Yeah, I guess the thing is, is developmental disorders are really interesting sorts of things. And probably understanding the brain better than we do is going to make a really big difference in mm -hmm. making sense of these. Uh, and, and there may be, in fact, part of the spectrum, as you mm -hmm. suggest, which makes the analogy sometimes to um, normal kinds of infectious diseases not, not, not so good a model because you don't normally move from cold to, you know, to pneumonia. It's not the way things you know. you're not going to get You're not going to get the chicken pox because you had a, a fever unless, it's, unless you had exposure to it. So, but... But it's interesting that even in the issues that you're talking about, which go back to childhood, that we there hasn't really been, from the psychiatric point of view, very much discussion about more development, particularly say cerebral development. Which you know, so remember when bedwetting used to be seen as a psychiatric disorder, mm -hmm. now we understand it's motor function disorder mm -hmm. of a, a late development. So I wonder how we're going to be able to bring these things together because I feel like what I'm doing. On a regular basis, it doesn't really carry over. Aside from the schizophrenics, who seem to be very weakly lateralized, which is a, so there are. I would say what I'm looking at are language disorders, right? Or to manifest themselves from language disorders. And what you're looking at are not so much language disorders. They, maybe there's a different class. Huh? Right. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if it's a different class, different parts of the brain that are involved, maybe more frontal, less language related. Um, so maybe schizophrenia, you know, oddly enough, is is not not like on a not on a spectrum with bipolar disorder at all. Well, I, I'm not a I'm not a believer in that theory. Right. I, I think they are different. I mean, there's a good deal of work, as you know, on neuro, the neurodevelopmental hypothesis of schizophrenia, and that's right. very popular right now. There is even some work on that with bipolar disorder, but uh, there there the overlap that exists between the two is very little um, when you look at it from an epidemiological perspective. And even from a biological perspective, it's very little when you look at the fact that one illness is recurrent and episodic, it comes and goes, and the other one's not. So they're very different. Schizophrenia is somewhat recurrent, but over a longer period it's of chronic. time. Yeah. But, you know, can, some people just, they just get better, but maybe their diagnosis is wrong. Yeah. Right. It's, it's possible. But there is that, that difference that really language, although it may sound like a bipolar patient, right, is using language in a sort of bizarre and fluid way, they make much more sense. That is schizophrenics use of language. Yeah, I mean, except for maybe very temporarily at the very height of a, a very severe manic psychosis. Yeah. So, um, so there's still a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm.